So, uh, as you know, I'm, I'm, I'm always excited to, to come and support Nagi. Nagi has been an amazing supporter for our registry. Uh, we run the, the international registry on ablation therapy. We don't have the chance to have as many patients as you have in Asia. We have a small randomized control trial as well, but it's so much harder to enroll. We, have, we work with much less of a pool of patients, obviously. So I've, I've been asked to talk about a, a biggest summary of our ablation therapy in the biliary tree. So, uh, as you know, I'm not going to spend much time on this. Cholangiac carcinoma uh, is a disease that uh, we get, you know, approached by in a, in a non-resectable fashion, basically. Those people, when they come to us, the majority of them, 80%, are non-resectable. So our job is really to drain into other palliation. I think that has been clear. Now, this is not working. Okay, so there's a lot of data on radiofrequency ablation. I'm, I'm not going to talk about ablation therapy used uh, by uh, intervention radiology. Uh, this is the famous Habib probe. Um, as you know, uh, Nagy is a surgeon. So what he did basically, he took a surgical instrument and he sublimated this into an amazing endoscopic instrument because the sublimation of surgical endoscopy is this kind of device, allowing you to do the same thing that you do when you actually cut in and, and, and are feigning the liver is actually doing this into the biliary tree. And so the idea is to offer ablation therapy between those two markers. And you know, the settings were defined initially with, uh, with a, a, the RITA, which is a, uh, an IR uh, generator used a lot by our IR colleagues. But the revolution was to switch it to Irby, and Bill has been crucial in this. And I have to thank Bill for doing this because he really didn't want to work with the, with the RITA. I don't know if it's because he didn't like the RITA or he didn't have it, but he basically made all the, the settings available in his lab to show that actually we can do exactly the same thing with the Irby. So typical patient here from, from the Steele study, um, we mimic it what they did. You get access into the right, you get access to the left, you ablate on the right, you ablate on the left. And um, what you do basically, you just added this to your ERCP arsenal. So, you come to a stage when you, when you read the paper of Steele, and this is what, what I was thinking is, uh, it doesn't take so much time to just add it to what you're doing already. Those patients are going to have an ERCP. Those patients are going to be stented. So let's just add our, our radio frequency ablation. So then we decided to embark on our multicentric data and start capturing, capturing this. And we had to do this into an RB-approved protocol because our institution, even though the probe was um, FDA approved, we're very concerned about using it. This is way back around 2010. So we embarked on this. We, 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 we shifted the protocol to New York when we, when we came to New York, and we started capturing data. And what we did is for patients that wanted to come back, we offer them serial ablation therapy because every ablation therapy will offer you deep bulking, a little bit like you, know, you, you downstage the cancer in a local fashion, and then you come back. Uh, uh, and you stand those patients. The patient that didn't want to be, um, um, you know, having repeated sessions, we will offer them metal stenting. So we enrolled 22 patients in that very first study, and Reem did a very nice uh, job getting all those data, cleaning them up and everything. Bill was an amazing contributor to this uh, paper. And we looked at two things. We looked at uh, the improvement into the, the stricture. We call that remodeling, okay? But also, we wanted to, to go beyond this. So this is the kind of picture that we, we had. This is optical cholangiography. And I'm going to show you a case here of a digital cholangio cholangiography, which was recently submitted and, um, and, and published, uh, I think, in endoscopy, that one. So this is a typical patient that comes with uh, pancreatic cancer involving the, the bowel duct. So the very first step is just to go down. So she has this stand for now six months. And she, she comes seriously now every six months to get the, this, uh, this procedure. And she's been alive for now more than four years. Uh, it's one of the first patients that I treat at Cornell. So that's just stunning. And she just come in clinic every month with her CT, which has been unchanged for the last four years. Get her stand removed. We do spyglass first. This is spyglass after stand removal. You can see the cancer in the area that is a little bit distorted by, by the presence of a stand. But you can recognize tumor in growth into the biliary tree. So then what we're going to do, uh, very simply, we're going we're gonna to get access into the, this is the normal duct, obviously, above the lesion. We're going to get access uh, with a wire. And we're going to advance uh, the Habib probe over the wire. Here we are. We are into the bile duct. 
And we're going to apply ablation. Uh, the, the probe is radio opaque. You can see those nice markers. You can really decide exactly where you want the, the, uh, the ablation to be done. And then we're going to go back, and we want to look with spyglass the effect. It's, we, we, this is something that you want to do because it's very satisfactory. This is completely carbonized, completely, completely burned. So the energy liberated by this has been demonstrated by steel to be more than 2,000 joules. So it's a very, very intense energy. So it's localized, but it's very intense. That's something we need to remember for after. And as I said, she keeps on coming back every three months, and she's doing very well. So what are the production of structure improvement, and why is it important to look at this? Because what we notice is the people that have the best improvement, the best remodeling, seems to live longer. So that's, that was a very important result here. We were surprised to see that the people that were responding to most to that data, and I remember calling Bill about this, were people with pancreatic cancer involving the bowel duct. So that is very interesting because those patients, basically, they get chemo rad, you know, and you just don't know what to do with them. Well, this is something you can do with them if the bowel duct is involved. So we have to start thinking differently about those patients. We used to send them and then send them away. Don't send them away. Bring them back. Talk to them about ablation therapy. I mean, somebody who's been around for more than four years is pretty, pretty impressive. So there are adverse events. What are they? Pain, post-ERC pancreatitis, which obviously is related to ERCP, cholecystitis. You have to be very careful for cholecystitis. And I was looking at the data that you presented that were very interesting. Cholecystitis can be an adverse event of ablation therapy. I don't deny that. If the cystic duct is into your trajectory, in your area of ablation, absolutely. But cholecystitis is also a progression of disease. Those patients, when their cancer is growing, they're going to impinge the cystic duct, and they will have cholecystitis. You have to have an extremely high vigilance about cholecystitis. When I was in Virginia and I started you know, to do ablation therapy, some of those people were just like responding to the treatment and dying from cholecystitis. In 2016, it is unacceptable to die from cholecystitis. We have so many tools to us. As you know now, we can drain this within EOS guidance. Our policy in Wild Cornell has been, for the last three years, we drain those patients endoscopically. So it's not uncommon to see patients coming in with a stent from the small bowel, one of those luminaposing metal stents, draining the gallbladder, and having serial ablation therapy. It's not uncommon at all. And I highly recommend you to be extremely aggressive with cholecystitis. You don't want those patients responding to your chemo radiation protocol and ablation, dying for something so stupid as cholecystitis. So the mean survival of patients with pancreatic cancer was 14 months, uh, plus minus 11 months. For cholangiogenic carcinoma, 17 months. So we definitely had a benefit. And just that, my, my previous speaker, thank you for uh, talking about this data, Reem was genius because he said, I want to see how those patients, because we, we didn't randomize, how those patients do that we drain with ablation therapy, how they do compared to the SERS data. This is the national database capturing patients that have any kind of cancer, and everybody has access to it. So she went back and, 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 and showed those graphs. And I remember just before submission, I look at this, I said, this, this is wonderful. I, I don't know how you found this on the line. But, and indeed, if you compare to our national database, bringing ablation definitely increased survival. So there is no reason why not to do ablation therapy if you want to stand those patients. So the other question that, that we wanted to look at is, what is the benefit of RFA to stenting? So we know that it definitely increased uh, you know, survival. But what about what does it add to stenting? So there are, there are data from the West Abbey group. As you know, West Abbey works uh, with Nagy. It's his endoscopy. He's a very lucky man, by the way. He just inherited from all this device from you. It's beautiful. Just walk into the endoscopy suite. Hey, try this. And he's a lucky man. So we, what, what we had to do, actually, is to go back. So we said, OK. Why don't we do this? Why don't we look at all our data of the people that got ablation and stenting and the people that just got stenting for whatever reason? And then we were surprised to see that it was significant as well. Yes, it's not randomized. Yes, it's not prospective multicentric. But this is our next step. As you know, those kind of studies require a lot of fundings and a lot of time. So why RFA? Well, RFA allow you to get anywhere that you can treat very aggressively with high-intensity energy with ablation. Okay? 
It can be also used for open metal stent. And I know Bill has probably the largest experience in the United States about this. It's FDA approved, if inexpensive. So people always talk to me, come to me and talk to me, what about PDT versus RFA? This is not a competition. This is a completely different concept. PDT, as you know, is done in the setting of a trial. You need to have those patients randomized or enroll into a history. You need to have FDA clearance of the drug and to use the fiber, which is not FDA approved. It's very difficult. But the RFA probe is a probe that you can add to your arsenal. Plus, ablation therapy with RFA can be done for bowel duct cancer involving the bowel duct can be done for local regionally metastatic diseases. We had a patient that had lymph nodes that were involved in the bowel duct, completely uh, taking it over. Ablation therapy will help you with this. So especially when you have a bismuth one, bismuth two, with bismuth three, it will become more difficult because that basically means you have at least three applications to do. So compliance, you don't have an issue with compliance. That patient, she comes to see me. She get a clinic visit, get some lab, get on the table, get her ablation therapy, six months back she's coming back, have a melastin removed and then ablation therapy. And you don't need resources for this. So as I said, when people come and see me, say, I want to start an ablation program. I say, okay, do you have a pharmacist, a research coordinator, you have a PA, yada, yada. If they don't have all that, what you need is a probe. So the conclusion is RFA is safe and efficient for malignant bleed obstruction. RFA has shown to improve survival for cholangiac carcinoma and pancreatic cancer. We need further study as we go in, and I invite you, every single one of you who embrace RFA, to contact me because I need you to be in my, in my registry, just as Bill. Thank you so much.